QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 Change Payroll Items for Payroll Taxes. Get ready because we bookkeeping pros are moving up the hilltop with QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file going through the setup process with the view drop down, the open windows list on the left hand side, company drop down, home page in the middle, maximize in the home page. Going to the reports drop down, company and financial, taking a look at that balance sheet standard. We're going to be doing some customization with a range change 010122, 123122. Fonts and the numbers, changing that font on up to 14. Okay, yes, please. Okay. Reports drop down, company and financial, taking a look at the PL profit and loss range change 010122. 123122 and then customizing the reports with the fonts and the numbers changing the font up on to 14 okay yes please and okay one more time with the reports drop down accounting and taxes trial balance range change 0101221231122 customizing the reports with the fonts and numbers changing the font 214 and okay yes please and okay let's go back on over to the profit and loss now on the left hand side you'll recall last time we processed the payroll and we grouped both the payroll as well as the payroll uh, expenses into one payroll item here and now we're thinking possibly we would like to be breaking these out into two separate accounts so if i double click on this for example we will see then Adam and Erica. We see the check that represents the gross wages, double clicking in on it. We see that that's gonna be the gross wages as opposed to the net wages. And then the taxes, if I go to the check detail to take a look at the taxes, there we have the taxes and these are the payroll taxes that we are including in that same account and which we, which we would like to break out into a separate account. I'm going to close this out, close in this back out. We got a similar process for Erica down here. Here's Erica's check. And if I look at the paycheck detail, we've got the gross check and then we've got our payroll taxes we'd like to break out. So I'm going to close this out, close this out just to get an idea of the items that we could use to do this. We can go then to the lists drop down and take a look at the payroll items. And in the payroll items, I'm going to close out the carrot on the left hand side. We can look at the items that are our payroll taxes. So that would be the federal unemployment as well as the Medicare for the company and Social Security on the company side that we might want to put to another account. Let's start with the Medicare. Make sure you have the company area. I'm going to double click on it, mapping this thing out. We're going to say next, next. And I'm looking for this item where it's going to the payroll expense. I would like it to go to a different account, which is going to be the payroll taxes hitting the drop down, scrolling up. I'm going to add an account as we go. It's going to be an expense account. I'm going to call it payroll taxes, payroll tax expense. Let's call it expense, payroll tax expense. And there we have it save and close that and then i'm going to say next and so there looks good it's applying out the rate company and tax rates so i'm going to say okay and then taxable compensation i'm going to finish it off here so it says you have changed the expense account associated with a payroll item please choose an option to continue update all existing transactions update transactions starting on one one so they're saying, do you want us to go back and readjust the items that uh, we did before? Now, so that would be important if you want to have a cutoff and then change your process going forward. This is a new company for us and we only have one item there. So I'm going to change all existing transactions, which shouldn't change anything with the actual processing of the payroll. It just should be a change in the account that is being assigned to from one expense account to another expense account. So I'm going to say, okay. And then there we have that. Let's take a look at it. Opening up the icon on the left-hand side, taking a look at the trial balance now. Well, let's, let's look at the income statement. That might be easier to see. If I go to the profit and the loss, scrolling down, now we've got this payroll tax item. And there's the 4126 for the employer portion of the payroll tax, I believe, for Medicare. Let's try it again. Let's go to the, let's go to the payroll item again and say that was for Medicare. 
Let's do it for the social security on the company side, not the employee, but the company side. And then I'm going to say next, next. And then this one again, I'm going to charge this one to now payroll tax expense and say next and next and finish. And I'm going to do it for all transactions, which there is only one at this point. Okay. And then we could do it for the federal unemployment, even though we didn't record any, just but that's what, another one that would go into the taxes because that's an employer tax. So next, 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 and hold on, let's go back, 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 federal unemployment taxes, and then it's going to go into the payroll liability. Here's the expense account down here. And so we're going to say that's going to go to payroll tax and next next and finish and i'm going to do it to all transactions there are none for that one yet or nothing's been posted to an amount for it then if i go back to the profit and loss now we've got this breakout between the payroll expenses and taxes that can make it a little bit easier to tie out to some of the reporting like the end of the period 941s on a quarterly basis basis the 940 breaking out basically our taxes our portion of the taxes versus the employee portion so if i double click on this then so now we've got these transactions and this show basically our employer portion and then included in the payroll expense we see what we just should see which is basically the full check that includes the employee taxes in it but we don't call their taxes taxes even though we're going to be the tax collector on them because the iris makes us we they earned the full paycheck even though they're going to get the net check so closing that out, you could do another <clears throat> uh, similar thing on the balance sheet. So we could go down here and say, okay, they put everything in the payroll liabilities. You might want to break that out. You could put different liability accounts. For example, you might have the, the Social Security and Medicare broken out differently from the federal, uh, the federal income tax, the payroll tax for the federal income tax or FIT. But I won't go into more detail with that now. You could get an idea of how you would do that, though. Same kind of item. We'd go to the lists here, and then you could you can adjust those accounts and to whatever whatever would work best for you. You could also break out, for example, between the employees that are salary based, executive or sales force versus administrative or something like that, if you so choose in a similar fashion. Let's go look at the payroll reports now, real quickly. If I go to the reports drop down. And we take a look at the employee payroll and take a look at the payroll summary, for example. Changing the date range from 010122 to 123122. So there we have our summary report with our two employees. And here's how you could see, for example, this is something that if you were to do payroll and have it be processed outside of QuickBooks by, say, a third party like an ADP or Paychex, they might provide you with something like this as part of the reports that they would group together and you would then need to enter that data in some way into your books on to make the financial statements correct even if the payroll is being processed outside and you can see what i'm talking about with the with the idea that you can you can look at these things from an employee by employee basis or you can kind of combine them together as if one employee and look at that as a total or aggregate Looking at it from a total or aggregate can be useful when you're trying to check your numbers just in total and tie them out to the to the 940s and so on. Or if you're taking ADP or third party information and trying to input it into your financial statements for financial purposes. So we've got our 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 gross wages now at the 698333. If I go to my trial balance and scroll down, we got the 698333 now broken out separately because it's not including our payroll taxes and if i go then to the payroll summary then we've got all the withholdings that have taken place and then the employer portion these are our portion of the taxes if i add them both together for the two that's the 47423 and notice how nicely that now ties out to the separate account of the 47423 instead of being grouped in with the payroll taxes and then if and then if we go to the summary then all the taxes, if we were to consider the taxes that have been compiled to this point, we've got the 5429.1. And hold on a second, that's not correct. We've got the 1554.23 plus the 
and that's going to give us the 2820-2846 on the trial balance. If we go to the liabilities then, taking a look at the liabilities, there's the 202846. So you can kind of tie, tie that information out. That's useful because those types of reports are what you're typically going to use to tie out to the period in reporting, that being the 941s on a quarterly basis for federal income tax on, on the payroll tax side, not our federal income tax, but the payroll federal income tax for the employees employer and employee portion of social social security and medicare on the 941s 940 at the end of the year the federal unemployment tax will be using those reports typically the w2s and the w3 of course as well and if you can you want to enter your data in such a way that you can reconcile those items to your financials giving you some security over making sure you have a double check that you're doing that correctly payroll once again being one of those items where you're most likely to have you know, get sued or something like that. And you want, and you want to be able to make sure that everything in it is done properly.